Hey guys, it's Liam Hitchens here, bringing you another video today. We're going through the top 10 places to travel to get that summer sun in November. But obviously, I'm here in the UK, it's cold, so I'm wrapped up. Let's go somewhere a bit warmer. So, we're here in Malta. And in November, Moa is around 21 degrees average, and it's getting a bit hot. Obviously, we just left the UK, and I'm still in my jacket, scarf, and hat, and like all the winter clothing, because as you've just seen, the weather is just cold, windy, and it's just not the weather that I enjoy. So, let's get changed in a second. Boom, that's better. That is more like the clothing that I should be wearing while I'm over here in Malta. But yeah guys, for now we are going to be going through the top travel destination in November, December and January. Because no one wants to be in the cold weather. Let's be honest guys, why would you want to be in the cold weather when you can be nice and tanned in the hot weather? and just, you generally have a better mood when you are in the hot weather. You know where I'm coming from. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So, like I said, number one is Malta at 21 degrees on average. So it's warm enough to be able to relax in the sun. But guys, remember, in the evening it does get cooler. It goes down to around 40 degrees and bring a jumper with you, bring something for the evenings because it is going to get that little bit cooler. And the good thing about going to Malta in this space off November and December time, you can get it for around £36 from London on average. Malta is situated in the heart of the Mediterranean Sea, brimming with culture and there's so much to actually do there, nature, hiking, all of that type of stuff. Because it's not so big, its size makes it easy to explore. With 7,000 years of history, you don't want to miss out on going to this country. Also, recently this year, it was voted the number one hotspot for 2017. Let's head to number two, Tenerife. Tenerife is coming in at 23 degrees on average, with sea temperature of 22 degrees. Bear in mind though, this time of year, it does get windy in the late afternoons and evening. So also the same as Malta, bring a jumper, and bring something, just to keep you a little bit warmer in the evening. Anywhere between 45 pounds to 220 pounds, depending where in the UK you're flying from. Obviously being up in Scotland, it's gonna cost you more than flying from London. When you're out in Tenerife, you can visit Siam Park. It's personally amazing. I've been there a few times. I've been to Tenerife in my lifetime. I think I've been there one, two, I, I don't know. Three, four, five times, something like that. Obviously with the family and then once with my mate we went back in 2013, I think we were caught. Other than Siam Park, you do Jeep safaris, hiking, snorkeling, scuba diving, quad biking. You can hike up the highest volcano in the Canary Islands. If hiking's not for you, you can take a bus tour, you can do night tours, all of that type of thing. There's options for anyone that really wants to go up and see that. Let's head over to the other side of the world and we're going to America, Los Angeles. LA, the big LA. Fly there for around £259 to thousands of pounds. It depends what class you go and depends how much you're willing to actually spend and where you're flying from again. But the cheapest I found was £259 from London. On average, in November, it is around 22 degrees Celsius. Wet weather just for lounging around, relaxing, and yeah, just lounging on the beach. When you're, when you're out there, you can go behind the scenes and explore the Universal Studios. I've personally never done this, but it's something I really, really want to do, and hopefully be able to do it at some point in the future. You can take Holloway, Holloway, Holloway. You can 
can take Hollywood day tours also guys, uh, helicopter tours, you can hike Mount Hollywood where the iconic Hollywood sign is, you can see it from all over Hollywood. Also guys, I have seen out there that you, it's one thing that so many people recommend is hiring a push bike for the day and enjoying the coast and the ocean breeze by cycling down Santa Monica is where everything happens and just a great place to relax. So guys, if you want to go to LA, there's your prices and that is number three on our list. Coming in at number four on our top 10 destinations to travel to in November is Marrakesh. Average weather is around 23 degrees in November and temperatures can drop to around 10 degrees mine so like I said with all these places make sure to bring stuff for a night because it does get chilly and you don't want to be walking around in a vest like this so make sure guys that you bring a jumper or something for the evening if you want to take in some stunning views when you're out there why don't you go and explore Atlas Mountains you can take camel rides up or you can hike up and there's all sorts of tours to do this if hiking's not your thing guys why don't you go do quad biking in Pamari I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it but sorry guys if I've butchered the name you know how it is and you know what I'm like when it comes to names of places but yeah, this is known for the tens of thousands of palm trees and absolute astonishing views as you can see right here behind me but yeah, go and do quad biking you can also do camel trips through there as well for the evenings, the food markets, cooking classes they're all over the city and if you want to embrace yourself in the culture and truly experience Marrakesh then I suggest you go and do some of these food courses or at least visit the food markets. So we're halfway through the list and coming in for number five is South Australia. With its average weather ranging between 14 degrees and 23 degrees with nine hours of sunlight a day. How can you go wrong? It's warm or warmer than the UK anyway and you've got nine hours of daylight so you've got plenty of time to visit sea scenery and explore South Australia. The sea temperature is around 17 degrees on average. Flights cost around 500 to 600. This is flying from London as it's so, so large and the prices can vary a lot. So what can you do in South Australia? Obviously it's so vast. Well, I'm gonna start it off with kangaroo I learned you can go there and see the beautiful coastal views and the vast wilderness areas. If you love the outdoors, then this is a place for you to go and visit and just relax and enjoy the wilderness. So guys, if you're over in South Australia, definitely go and check out Kangaroo Island. Also, Seal Bay Conservation Park. That is another place that I recommend anyone that is into that type of thing to go to. Reason being, this place offers the most exceptional nature based experiences. And to top it off, their money, the, the cost, and all of that, it all goes towards preserving the natural habitat for seals. And all in all, it's just a great experience. Let's head to Phuket. On average in Phuket, the weather is lows of 23 and highs of 32. When you're traveling to Phuket, the flights vary between 300 and 600, depending again where you fly from. I'm not gonna go into detail what you can do in Phuket because if you're watching this video and thinking of traveling, I am pretty sure you have researched it. Thailand because it is where all the backpackers go and where the fast one is but as you can see from right here this is just some of the stuff that you could get up to 
Number seven is Florida. We're back in America. Average highs of 27 degrees. Why wouldn't you want to go there when the average highs over here in the UK are around 14? <laughs> With evenings, you're cooling down to a mere 20 degrees maximum. You can expect around 11 hours of daylight. Remember guys, to bring your sun cream because you're gonna be catching some rays and you don't wanna go home like a lobster. Or a beetroot. Or a tomato. But yeah guys, remember to bring your sun cream if you get headed over to Florida in November and enjoy that sun. So from the UK, it is around 304 to 600 again. It's, it depends where you're flying from, but the cheapest is always London. Don't know why that is, it just is. So these are all done, I've researched all of these prices through Skyscanner, which I'll link below. And I find it's just the easiest website to use and it just searches it all for you. But you can use Google Flights, that works. Um, Kayak, there's all sorts of search engines that you can use to research your site for, uh, your flight prices. I use Skyscanner, I really do recommend it. By the way, this isn't sponsored. What can you do in Florida? First of all, everyone knows Walt Disney. You can obviously go to there. I'm not gonna go into explanation of that because if you don't know what Walt Disney is, then where have you been all your life? Sorry, but seriously. If that type of thing is not your thing, then there's museums such as St. Cloud Museum. You can go and visit. You can do outdoor activities such as swamp tours, going out on the boats and searching for alligators and crocodiles and all of that type of thing. Or if you really want to go extreme, why don't you do a city skydive? They I've never done a skydive, I really, really want to, and it's one thing that I'm aiming to do next year. That's one of the main goals, is to go skydiving next year, and yeah, see how that turns out. But, let's head to Vietnam. Boom. The average high here in Vietnam, in the cap capital of Hanoi, is 25 degrees. Even in the evening, things stay nice and warm and it only drops to around 19 degrees Celsius. So there is no need for that winter clothing like I had on earlier, or jumpers, jackets, all of that type of thing because it's just gonna be too warm to actually wear it, which is why you're got, all you guys are here. You wanna know where to go, where it's warm, where it's sunny, and where you can get away from that winter cold weather. Average flight costs vary from 325 to about 650 pounds. Obviously, once again, depending where you fly from, the cheapest was London Gatwick. What can you do in Vietnam once you get there, once you've paid for your flights and you're over there? Hey, Halong Bay, I think I pronounced that right. It's in the northern tip of Vietnam and it is, and it is dotted with 1,600 limestone islands. You've probably seen the photos and videos like here, 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 and here. Once a day you can go cliff jumping, scuba diving, cave hunting, and cave exploring, that type of thing. From what I've seen, it is absolutely beautiful. I, I haven't had the chance to go there yet, but it's one place I'm gonna go to. And Embrace it. So guys, if you've been there already, comment down below what you thought of it and what you recommend also. Once you've been to Halong Bay, go and check out temples and sanctuaries such as my son or even the sand dunes of Maine. Nearly at the end of the top 10, coming in at number 9 is Cambodia. Cambodia's average weather is from 31 to 24 degrees. Cambodia is preferred for exploring the local culture and the local temples. 
and all of that type of thing. Not somewhere you go in like Thailand where you can party and all of that. It's very more exploring a country and enjoying the way people live and the cultures. You can get over from the UK to Cambodia for around 350 to 400 pounds. I suggest you book this flight, get over there and enjoy some winter sun. I can't mention Cambodia without mentioning the famous Angkor Wat. What? 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 But also, guys, other temples that you can see are the likes of Siam Reap and Bayon Temple. You guys, if that's your type of style, then Cambodia is the place for you to go and visit this winter. Coming in for number 10 is Dubai. Yes, guys, a lot of people put this one to one side, but this has reached the top 10 places to visit in November. And the average high here is around 31 degrees Celsius, so there's no need for jumpers and all of that in the daytime. But it does cool to around 18 degrees, which because you're around, out around the desert area, it is going to seem a lot colder than it is. So I would take a jumper just for the evenings. You can explore for hours with up to 11 hours of daylight over in Dubai. And the flights are... £230, that's the cheapest flight that I found when I was researching it through Skyscanner. But if you really want to experience the Middle East and enjoy the hot weather this winter, then head over to Dubai. Some of the things that you can actually go and see in Dubai are the famous fountains. They reach up to 500 feet and they are choreographed to music. And it's such a view. As you can see right here. This is the end. Hold your breath and count to ten. If you fancy a spot shop in Wakara, which is why we all know it to be tax free and being able to get a lot of stuff for cheap out there, then head over to the Dubai Mall located in the heart of downtown Dubai. It's the largest shopping mall and entertainment destination around the world. 1,200 retail shops and with way over 160 food counters and restaurants and bars that general type of area. So guys, if you fancy a spot shopping one day once you're in Dubai, then head over to the Dubai Mall. If you want to get out and about, explore, be a bit adventurous, then I recommend doing a four-wheel drive ATV or an off-road tour. This will take you through the vast sand dunes and the rugged desert on the outskirts of Dubai. You really, if you want to get outdoors, then this is the thing for you. You can also go and do a camel tour out in the desert, and I and you can also, lastly, go out and spend time with the locals and eat and camp doing a night tour. The opportunities are endless when you're in Dubai. But for now, guys, I'm going to head back to the UK and put on my warm clothes once again. Back in the UK, back to the cold weather. Got my jacket on. As you can probably tell, it's pretty cold. But guys, that is the top 10 destinations for November 2017. Guys, remember to subscribe, like, comment below, and peace out.